All right, and I'm Zachary Fowler, Maker of Mischief, and uh, we're out here in the woods. We're gonna cut some uh, maple down here, make another water bottle like the one I made on loan so I could bring water up and over the hill that was eight stories while I was working on my shelter. And at the end, I'm gonna pour some water in it, and we'll see exactly how much water it held. Got my ax, got my saw that I had out there with me as one of my 10 items, or two of my 10 items, and the multi-tool, I'm gonna use that to hollow it out just like I did when I was there. All right, got myself a piece for the water bottle. Let's head back and see if we can make ourselves a water bottle. Ow, ow, ow. You gonna, ow, ow. ow. Now to the workshop and put our tools away. I don't think we're gonna be able to get on with it tonight. I'll have to finish, finish tomorrow. It is icy out there. I slipped and dragged my face down the side of a hemlock yesterday. All right, so I'm back at it again today. I got my little block of wood for my new water bottle. And remember to be safe when you use your ax. I know what I'm doing. I've been splitting wood like this for years. Oh, that's not good. That's gonna leave a mark. That's okay. I got a little plantain just for this situation, you know. If you tore it off, and then you just put a little plantain on there, and and it'll be good in a couple days. All right. So here we got it. Split wicked easy. So that it looks and comes out fairly evenly. I'm gonna shave the inside out so it's a water bottle. Turn that can opener into a spoon gouge, which allowed me to make spoons and a grub holder and everything else. Let's see how well she still works. Oh, thing of beauty. All right, nailed it. Remember, sharp tool, big shavings. Dull tool, lots of little shavings. So I did it. I got my two halves here. <laughs> Love this thing. All right, now I trim down the neck of the bottle a little bit. I still prefer using my shovel for a lot of stuff. And it's just so darn useful, so sharp. And now it's time to chink it. So I have my shemog, the same shemog I had out there. And what I did out there was stripped the edge of it of a few fibers. You can see I used it for happy rocks in my sleeping bag at the beginning. And uh, what I did was I found some fibers on the edge. One edge I just sacrificed to get some of these fibers out. So I got all my cotton strands for my shemog here. I'm gonna take them like three or four at a time and work them into a um, double twisted piece of line that I can work in there for the chinking. All right, so I made myself a uh, twisted up line and now I'm gonna put it in my bottle. Lay the bottle out like so. Put your, just put your line into the uh, gap between the two bottles. I'm gonna stick the two halves together and tie it up now. So you got your strings in there, captured. And now it's time to put the whole thing, lash it all together so it stays the way it is. You gotta hold her good and tight. I like fishing line for this because you can uh, really crank down on it. Now last time I cut some fancy little notches around there. But uh, this time I'm just going for it. So I put a couple wraps around it, pinch the end under my finger and then really haul on it. I want that fishing line to stretch every time so that it can, it's a continual tension that'll stay on this and pulling it together as it shrinks and swells and 
it'll still stay tight. Put a little spit on it. So now you got a square nut, it's really not all that tight. Pull in one direction and it becomes a uh, half hitch over top of this and the square nut comes apart. Then you slide to the side, that tightens up, and then you work both ends of that back and forth until it pops back into a square knot. It's almost impossible to see, but it did it. And then, because it's fishing line, a little more spit to keep the uh, friction from ruining the knot as you tie it. And tie a bunch of knots on top of that. Remember, if you can't tie a knot, tie a lot. All tied up. With the cotton in there, just need to make a cork. I got my little piece of wood that I cut for that. And uh, the Swiss multi-tool again to the rescue. There we go. And there you have it. One bottle, one cork, ready for water. So there they are, the one I made in Patagonia from, uh, I believe, the beach that was there. Um, and the one I just whipped out for you. Let's see, uh, let's first, let's see the uh, new one in action. Let's see if she holds water. Got my old teapot from the uh, wood stove. Got a slight drip. That happened out there in Patagonia too until it swells up a little bit. It will uh I'll see how the cork fits. There we go. So, oh, it's still a little bit of a drip. Eh, cork's not perfect fit just yet, but uh, neither was this one, you know. It's mostly if it tips over, I get it back up, I only lose a couple you know. A half a sip, quarter sip. Um, but there you have it. One water bottle, a little bit of time for swelling, and uh, or maybe another second wrap around it. It'll be good to go. And see this one, I didn't shave out that much. Let's see how much water it holds. Half a cup. Four ounces, half a cup. Now we got the one from Patagonia. This one's dried out quite a bit. I bet this one leaks like a sieve. Let's see. Yep. <laughs> she needs to swell up a bit before it starts working again. All right, I'll see if I can't go really quickly and we'll put it into the, the jug and see how much it Not bad. One cup. One cup of water is all she held. But that was all I needed. You know, that got me through about a six hour work day when I went up and over the hill to work on my shelter. So I wasn't thirsty. And uh, I probably could have shaved it out a little bit more, but that's, that's about all I needed. There you have it. That's how you make a Bushman's water bottle. Now get out there and make your own. Mmm. Wood chips. Man, they taste good coming out of a maple tree water bottle.